Hello once again witchy people. This started off as a really simple quick video and ended up being so convoluted I kind of lost myself in it. So I've tried to sort of like look back on what I recorded. This is going to be so, ugh. I looked back on what I recorded and then I wrote it all down and then I cut loads of it out to make it more simplified. Now which is why I've got notes in front of me. This isn't necessarily a, specifically about doing shadow work. It's questioning whether there's a difference between the Carl Jung defined shadow and the witchy spiritual shadow. Or rather not the actual shadow, but shadow working. So is there a, a difference between psychological Jungian shadow work and spiritual witchy shadow work so to me there is there is a difference so shadow working i think when when you're a witch well for me anyway it's not exploring that which isn't seen or accepted but rather it's the darker aspects of my personality and psyche um, that need not to be addressed necessarily but more embraced and acknowledged um, in order to, to maintain a balance not only in my life but in my path as well and in my practice so it's looking inward and actively searching for these emotions and then sort of like the, the negative and the darker emotions if you like in order to use them for a positive outcome so the young the jungian jungian as some people say carl jung defined shadow is it's a, it's a psychological term for everything we can't see in ourselves or that which we deny within ourselves so it's the darker supposedly less favorable or inferior aspects of, our, of ourselves such as greed, envy, hatred or rage, that sort of thing. It is the part of ourselves that we disown within ourselves which makes us see it even more in other people. We, we often point it out in other people. Now Carl Jung actually said, how can I be substantial if I do not cast a shadow? I must have a dark side also if I am to be whole which is, yeah, we get that. <laughs> um, when we're told, like when we're kids, you know, don't shout, don't play the fool, don't play with your food, don't, don't throw a tantrum, that sort of thing. Or when we get angry, as children, you know, we're, we're told not to do this. So we repress those sides of us. And we, 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 uh, we repress those feelings and emotions as we mature and they become what Jung describes and calls our personal shadow and he also said there is no light without shadow and no psychic wholeness without imperfection I love that so basically in absolute layman's terms and hugely simplified <laughs> in a way that I understand it. And I could be wrong, this is just my opinion. The Jungian shadow is aspects of our own personalities that we are taught to repress and deny exist. It is that which we refuse to see in ourselves, but because we refuse to see it in ourselves, we often project onto others. So the aspect of our personalities that we disown um, will be what really annoys us most about someone else such as someone being rude or getting angry flying off the handle self-pity or greed that sort of thing but because nothing truly stays hidden and we have chosen not to control those aspects by ignoring them denying ignoring them we, we choose not to control you know, we take away all control of these these things and we put control back to them 
if you like. They are parts of our personalities that show when we least want them to. And in that way, they can ruin and destroy relationships and lives when we are not wholly who we are, who we really are. Now, the ancient Greeks embodied these aspects of these of, of their personalities, these darker negative aspects by turning them into gods and goddesses they embodied them into gods and goddesses and you ignore deities at your own peril because if you ignore a deity they will get very angry <laughs> and what you ignore becomes your destroyer and that's kind of how Jung seed it that's, has seen it that if you deny these things you you allow them to destroy you ultimately but like i said the ancient greeks they embodied they, they embodied these whole things they embraced them and embodied them into their gods and goddesses now according to jung we use up huge amounts of energy in repressing these parts of ourselves and that causes fatigue and it can cause health problems both mentally and physically and in order to remedy this, to make yourself well and whole, you need to do shadow work. Shadow work is needed. So both spiritual and psychological shadow work have their basis in accepting yourself as a whole. As a whole being and understanding that everyone, not just you, but everyone has a shadow self. And it needs to be a addressed without judgment and that kind of is where the first difference and the main difference maybe lies between psychological Jungian shadow work and spiritual witchy shadow work many witches have a spiritual balance already uh, we accept the darker aspects of ourselves and have learned to encompass all aspects of our personalities as good or useful rather than having good or bad pieces. We understand that we need dark and light already. We need the darkness and the light to have balance and both are useful and needed and good. There is no bad, it is all good. Because, like I said, you, without the light, you have no shadows. And without, you know, without pain, how do you truly experience joy? So you, you need that balance. And in that way, all emotions are good. Now, from what I can gather, the psychological Jung defined shadow work is it seems to be based a lot in recognizing in others that which offends us and then kind of looking inwards and to accept that the things that bother us most about other people are in fact the things that we are most prevalent in ourselves that we're trying to repress most in ourselves and so by recognising that you are the problem, if you like, um, so by recognising this, we accept others as well as we accept ourselves. We accept it in ourselves, so therefore we can accept others, good and bad, and therefore build healthier relationships. And that we are the problems that we see in others. And we are the negativity that we see in others and you become whole and healthy if you recognize this recognize this and work through it so spiritual shadow work to me is looking more as to why we are feeling what we are feeling and to try and cope with those feelings and working through them and then using them to strengthen ourselves and our path 
to accept that we are the one who has these feelings and emotions and not necessarily because we are projecting them and though and so recognize them recognizing them in other people so we acknowledge the self first and that i think is, is the whole difference between young defined shadow work and which spiritual defined shadow work and the the reason why i'm sort of doing this video is because i think a lot of people when when you say especially a lot of people coming into new witches it's just normal everyday people that like me who don't know really much about psychology and carl jung and philosophy and all the rest of it i, I don't know any of these sort of things I and mean, i didn't go to college for goodness sakes you know i i I had children instead <laughs> and we, when people talk about doing shadow work you don't understand the basis of it because we don't you know we don't get this whole shadow self and like I said if you look it up you'll get an awful lot and that there is one particular person that I really do not like who does a lot talks quite a bit about shadow work she, she's not a witch or anything I'm, I'm not talking about in in our community and i'm not i'm not going to name names because that's just mean but when she talks about shadow work it is very much young inspired and i think this has got nothing to do with me or my practice it's got nothing to do how i deal with my shadows how i deal with the i mean the, the basis is the same the shadows are the same only i don't see them as bad i see them as negative but negative doesn't necessarily mean bad so it's use it's working through your emotions your anger your anything if, if you're feeling petty about something you you figure out why you're feeling petty you work through it and then you use that in a positive way to strengthen yourself your path your practice and but it's recognizing it in yourself first a lot of the like i said the young defined shadow work is recognize it in others first and then realizing that you're projecting so it's a lot about projecting and i i think as a beginner that that can prove to be really difficult to try and get your head around so I'm hoping to talk more about shadow work in the future. I want to get someone else involved who is very, very adept at the way she speaks about shadow work and how she works through it. So I'm hoping to get a little bit of a collaboration done, but I'm not going to say anything because she might not agree. <laughs> so yes, that's just my, my ideas on this. So I'm trying to get used to my new chair. Um, it's, it's on loan from my daughter and um i don't know if i like it or not it's a bit creaky um so yeah my <laughs> my thoughts on shadow work and the differences and similarities even between young defined shadow work and spiritual defined the difference between the spiritual and the psychological and that's it i hope i kind of got through what i wanted to say and didn't go off tangent and remembered everything <laughs> that's it i'm going now thank you for watching with you people i'll be back very soon bye for now